Star Citizen may finally be putting the dark days of its major instability behind it. Last night, the devs released patch 319 to the live servers, and so far, so good. The new patch is absolutely loaded with features and mechanics, but they all come as an afterthought to the general stability of the game. CIG released their previous 3.18 update in early March, and while well, honestly, the game has been barely playable since. That's over two months of extreme instability issues and fairly serious blockers breaking just about every mechanic in the game. But last night, I loaded up the new patch and played for a good four hours and didn't run into any blockers or major issues. And that was with some server queue times as well, so it sounds like the back end was pretty stressed. I think many players were actually staying up late to play the new patch. Now it's entirely possible that the state of things will degrade over time, but for the moment I'm riding on the hopium that this game is finally locking in its crazy persistence tech and moving on to further refinement and the next major hurdles. Most people I spoke with had similar experiences playing the game last night, with the overall stability working well and some occasional weird bugs popping up here and there. Now one of the first things I did was test out one of the cooler new features which are the basic salvage missions, and they went off without a hitch. I paid a fee, got some coordinates, went out there, found some derelict ships, started scraping them for materials, I even crafted a multi-tool and tractor beam attachment, and I loaded up my Vulture with 13 SCUs of scrap metal and then took it down to Orison to sell for about 100k. For the most part, it worked flawlessly, though I did get an issue where landing the vulture caused Orson to warn me, like four minutes later, that they were impounding my ship for obstructing a flight bay, but at least it didn't delete my cargo. And I was able to sell it for no problem and still get my ship back. Then my buddy and I took a more expensive salvage mission in the hopes of finding some pricey loot. The mission triggered properly and spawned in a whole bunch of salvageable ships, and we were able to explore them and look for rare loot and even strip some of the weapons off of the ships. I was able to upgrade my cutlass weapons by stripping them from a disabled ship, which is one of the cool new 319 features. This could actually save you quite a bit of credits depending on what guns that you're upgrading. And eventually the internal components of ships will also be strippable, which will be super interesting if you can actually find some of the higher end ones. This could save you a lot of money in the long run. Now next up, I tested other mission loops that I like to run regularly, like bounty hunting other ships, bunker running, and even an 890 jump mission. They all worked without any major blockers, though AI still behave like lobotomized sloths when it comes to their reaction time. And sadly, that's probably just going to be a constant for Star Citizen until the server meshing tech or even dynamic server meshing gets added into the game. That said, the patch is supposed to have updated AI behavior pretty thoroughly, so if you do get engaged with enemies, they're supposed to have more spread to their shots, so you're not just laser beamed insta death immediately. So hopefully you'll have time to actually react to getting shot, heal yourself up if you're bleeding or taking damage, and re-engage. If this update actually improves that situation, it could be a huge quality of life upgrade. As for the rest of the features, there's a new Ghost Hollow PvP mission, which I haven't been able to try out yet, an actual new player experience, which will hopefully ease new players into the game. This has been sorely needed for a long time, and from what I've seen, it seems like a good first step to the process. Lorville, the first major landing zone in Star Citizen, has seen a massive visual update increasing its scale, atmospherics, and spectacle in just a truly impressive way. There's also a major overhaul to pretty much everything to do with mining, which I did show off in my last Star Citizen video, but if you're into mining, the experience is just completely overhauled. You can now do four-person mole mining and have it be extremely extremely viable way to make money. Other resources like gold are now worth mining a lot, not just quantanium. There's new hand mineables that have value to them. There's all sorts of modules and laser head updates to change their power properties and how effective they are and what they do. And there's new refining and selling prices. This also includes a complete resource update to what types of rocks you'll find, where you'll find them, where they sell for more and where they sell for less, how big the new rocks can be. Generally speaking, this has been a less touted 
feature of 319 since mining isn't everyone's jam, but it is a huge upgrade and you may just find yourself on a mole laser at some point sucking up some of that gold. Now they also updated the density manager system to deal with the new persistence tech so that mission entities and things that drop by missions such as corpses, guns, and debris will be cleaned up when the area is streamed out. Basically, this balances out all the craziness from patch 318 much better. I'm sure there will still be more improvements needed for this over time, and it's hard to test right when there's a brand new server as items and things haven't built up quite yet. So it'll be interesting to test this out in, say, a week. Now, a more controversial change has also been added to the game, and that's the insurance claim times and prices for insurance have increased massively. My stance on this is that while I believe the final goal of Star Citizen should be kind of a high risk, high reward play style and to stay alive as long as possible, very much like other survival games, the current general stability and issues of the game cause way too many situations where you need to claim your ship due to game bugs and not player issues. So increasing the insurance time and price is just going to punish players more for game issues than their own poor decisions. I think it's just bad timing to integrate this feature right now. Another new thing with 319 is the reduced inventory stock of ship weapons, missiles, and ship components sold at rest stops and stations. This will be interesting as I believe the goal is to make players rely more on finding and stripping these items versus just buying them. They also added in the Corsair, Cutter, and C8R Pisces, which I believe is the medical Pisces, to the in-game shops so that anyone looking to grind for these ships in-game can now do so. Notably, they did leave out the Drake Vulture from being a purchasable item in shops, as I think they really want to squeeze a little more cash out of the player base for this year's Invictus ship sales. And speaking of Invictus, one of the biggest ship sales for Star Citizen is coming up in a few days. It's also a pretty cool in-game event that's going to take place in Art Corp with fleet operations around Stanton, showing off the massive Bengal carrier and other major capital class ships. I believe there's also going to be a free fly event going on with it, which again will hopefully be much more stable for people wanting to try out the game for the first time. And if you're creating a new account for the first time, be sure to use my referral code linked in the video description to get some extra in-game credits. Now, at least one new ship is also launching with Invictus, that is the Mirai Fury. This thing looks really cool and it's a snub fighter that packs a punch with four weapon hardpoints. It also folds up super tiny and has no quantum drive, so it does have to be ferried over longer distances, but because it's so small, it seems like a lot of ships will actually be able to carry one of these, if not more. It also comes in two flavors, one that's kitted out with four weapons and an MX variant that offers 20 missiles. So once missile gameplay is a bit more refined, that could be an attractive option. The days of pocket carriers will soon be upon us once there's an actual reason to have pocket carriers. Overall, it seems like patch 319 is really what patch 318 should have been, a more stable version of the new persistence tech loaded with features to take advantage of it. It's been a rough couple of months for fans of the game, especially people who like to play Star Citizen somewhat regularly. Hopefully there aren't any major server degradation issues with this one. New servers tend to perform well, while the older servers suffer memory leaks and other problems. So only time will tell, but I'm actually starting to get excited about playing Star Citizen once again, which honestly is a great feeling. There's a lot to look forward to. Have you guys been playing the new patch yet? If so, let me know how it's been going for you. And next up, check out this mining video where we use two fully crude moles to crack some of the biggest rocks in the game. It's actually pretty cool and you don't want to miss it. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.